Welcome back to Money Magnet, the podcast that empowers you to achieve financial independence. I am Anna and I'm here with my co-host Alex. Hi. In today's episode, we are exploring the captivating world of investing in yourself and why that is the key to reaching your full potential. Now, we firmly believe that the most valuable and rewarding investment you can ever make is in yourself. And it is a journey that can lead to profound personal and financial growth. So we are super excited to explore this topic together with you. So what does investing into yourself mean? Investing in yourself is not just about putting money into stocks or real estate. When we talk about investing in yourself, we are referring to taking intentional actions and making conscious decisions that enhance your knowledge, skills, well-being and put you in a better position all in all. It's about embracing the power of continuous learning and self-improvement to become the best version of yourself. We'll begin by discussing why investing in yourself is essential for your personal development and financial success. And then we'll explore different areas where you can focus your investments to reap the greatest rewards. And last but not least, we'll end with a truly South African example. So let's get started. Firstly, investing in yourself allows you to develop and hone skills that can open doors to new and exciting opportunities. Whether it's advancing your career, starting your own business or pursuing a passion project, your skill set is a powerful asset, especially if those skills are transferable to other areas of life or in your career. Secondly, self-investment enhances your self-confidence and self-worth. As you acquire new knowledge and expertise, you'll feel more capable and empowered to tackle life's challenges and embrace new ventures. So let's talk about the different areas in which you can invest in yourself in a little bit more detail. Let's start with education and skill development. Continuous learning is a cornerstone of personal growth. Whether it's pursuing formal education, attending a workshop or taking online courses, Investing in your education can lead to exciting career opportunities and higher earning potential. What are forms of ongoing education or skills development that you are pursuing? Well, there's this one YouTube channel that I absolutely adore. It's called Extra History. I know this has nothing to do with money or anything, but I'm also a tour guide and I love the history of South Africa and also how it links with so many other global events throughout history. And this is a channel that tells you more about historic events that are not necessarily taught in school. So, for example, I learned how the Crimean War is related to South Africa, what the American War of Independence has to do with South Africa. So I really love learning more and more about global history, about the little things that you normally don't learn, and how I can add that to tell great stories about South Africa to my guests. What about yourself? I love listening to Audible. That is a great way for me to incorporate some exercise while I can learn something new. So let's just say in the middle of the day, I'm going for a beach walk. I put on my Audible. I have a subscription there and I listen at some moment from good to great. It's from Jim Collins and it's about companies that actually made the jump from good to becoming great. And it's been done solely on research. It's quite impressive because they actually went through backdating history points and checking how that actually made them a great company. They had certain criteria that they are managing the entire research on and then they're explaining how the jump has actually been created. So as an example, you would always ask how a transformation a business is going through actually was perceived as transformational at this point in time. And it's not the case, actually. It's not a transformation as such that the company has perceived. They are not aware of this at the point in time. And only reflecting back, do they realize that they actually went through a transformational process. It's a very cool book. It's helping us with other aspects in life, like, for example, that we are hiring people at the moment, you know, that we are actually looking at it in a little bit more different way. And it gives you small little inputs on how to deal with things in business. Very cool. I really like that. And I love that we're benefiting from it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's so many other things that I also do. I love reading books on personal development, but a little bit more about that later, because first and foremost, your physical well-being and your health is the foundation of your success. 
So investing in your health and your well-being pays dividends in all aspects of your life. So prioritize self-care, exercise and a balanced diet to boost your energy levels, mental clarity and overall happiness. When you are at your best physically and mentally, you can achieve way more and handle stress with much greater resilience. We all know this to be true, but how do we actually incorporate that into our lives? What do you do, Anna? Well... In the morning, I do a little bit of meditation, I do yoga or I do a workout routine. So I regularly prioritize my mental and my physical well-being in order to propel myself further in my life. So let's say like in the morning when I wake up, I start with making a nice breakfast. I actually have a beautiful, lovely coffee. And then I visualize my vision board. I'll have a look at it. I try to do a little meditation At the moment, I'm just recovering from being sick, so it's yoga only. Usually I do a proper workout routine of an hour where I feel splendid afterwards, (laughs) have a lovely nice shower, and after I've done all of this, then I actually start my day. I try to get a solid hour in at some point in the day where I have a beach walk just to listen to an audiobook, like I said earlier, or just get a break in my day to get peace and rest. What do you do? I'm a huge, huge, I can't repeat that often enough, huge fan of lists. (laughs) So when I get up in the morning, make my tea, I don't drink coffee. It's one of those things. I just don't like coffee. And I've been told coffee isn't that great anyway. (laughs) And sit down and then go through my day. Okay, what do I need to do? Whether it's work, whether it's household, whether it's any activities that I have got planned for later, shopping, everything. And it also includes a bullet point of like time for myself. Depending on the day, there can be a meditation that can be going for a run. It's just little things like this. And having that list helps me so much to stay organized throughout the day because it stops me from going like, oh, damn it, what was it? Ah, There was something else that I needed to do and like I can't remember. All that kind of stress goes away. And ticking everything off as I go through that list is a very nice feeling of like, yep, done, next, yep, done, next. So I love that. And it gives me a sense of achievement and it reduces my stress. Let's move on to another form of self-improvement, networking and building relationships. People say that your network is your net worth. So it helps to cultivate meaningful connections with like-minded individuals and mentors who can offer guidance and support. Networking opens doors to new opportunities and collaborations that can move you forward in your personal and financial growth. This also means that building a strong network and nurturing meaningful relationships is another critical aspect of investing in yourself. Do you have any tips for our listeners how to network more effectively? I personally think the best way to connect to people is over joint activities. So if you love hiking, join a hiking club. If you love playing chess, Go to Meetup, for example, and join a chess club. Find any activity that you enjoy doing and through various social platforms, find people that do the same kind of activity. Because once you have a point over which you can connect, you might find that there are many other things you have in common. Or even if you don't, people know people. So they might know someone who could help you and so on. Another way to meet new people are organizations like BNI. Business Network International or Rotary Club. So in some of these clubs, you might have business interests in common or just the drive to help other people, like what the Rotary Club does, for example. What do you do, Anna? I think COVID has made it more difficult for people to connect in real life. People have developed hesitations to actually meet up in person. I see that in myself. So it's some of these things where I have to actually really think about what do I want to achieve and how do I do this? So also I have a fairly active social life. Whenever I start my year or my month, I have to actually think of something that I want to improve and then actually work on it actively. So it's not something that comes super easy to me. And I think it has something to do with all those big goals that we have that I have to make a concerted effort. But I also can say that I have quite a big network that I already can use. What I try to implement is the 30-30-30 rule. When I look at my time, I try to divide it evenly into a third. 
Yeah, like obviously, you know, there's times that I want to spend on myself directly, but I try to actually invest my time in an even way. So 30% I try to spend time with people that can improve me, that are on a better intellectual level, that can mentor me, that I can benefit from and that I can learn from. Then 30% of my time I spend with peers, so like people that are on a similar level as I and that maybe you just want to engage with socially. And then 30% of my time, I also try to invest in people that I try to nurture, that I specifically go out to and try to help. So this is how I try to, you know, manage my time. Let's move on to my favorite topic, which is emotional intelligence and mindfulness. Because developing emotional intelligence and mindfulness is equally important to your well-being. It can positively impact your relationships, decision-making and overall well-being. It helps you to navigate life's challenges with more grace and resilience. And the same goes for cultivating self-awareness and empathy. So what do you mean exactly when you say that? Like I said earlier, I love reading books on personal development. And two of my favorite books are Time to Think by Nancy Kleine. And this book is all about learning how to listen. Because a lot of people think they can listen, but they actually can't. And by learning how to listen, you also learn how to cultivate a proper thinking culture. How to give yourself and other people the time to develop their thoughts while speaking out loud and so on. A very important point is not to interrupt people. Something everyone does so often. And it has helped me to develop a better communication culture, for example. Another book that I absolutely adore is The Child in You Must Find a Home by Stephanie Stahl. She's a German psychologist and the book is originally in German but available in English. And this book just shows you that we are all just people, that we are all fighting our own little fights and that we often don't act in malice towards someone else. It has taught me to think of people in general as good people and whatever they do, they do because of their beliefs not with the intent to hurt you or not with any maliciousness. So even if someone does something to hurt you, it's not necessarily because they want to hurt you. It is often their own way of dealing with their own issues. And this book has taught me that most of our behavior are defensive mechanisms. And it just helps you to be able to develop the awareness to step back either during a conversation or after the conversation And reflect like, okay, what went wrong here? How can this be improved? Instead of being stuck in a rut and just going in one direction, the only direction you know. And reading those kind of books helps you to broaden your own mindfulness to become more aware that we're all people. None of us is perfect. We all make mistakes. And to learn to navigate through this very dangerous ocean of communication, for example. I like what you explained there. I'd like to reflect on conversations that you had, maybe you've been in a, in a social circumstance where you felt uncomfortable and then have acted differently from the way you usually do, then it's good to go back and, and reflect, why, why did I feel like this? Why did I act this harsh? Or what was the reason for it? So I do like to reflect a lot on things as such and then perhaps even go back to, okay, this I could have done better you know, or go back to a friend and say like, look, I said this in a specific way, but this is actually how I meant it. So it's always good to reflect on your communication and to try to improve. It's one of those ways to practice forgiveness for yourself as well as for others. I think we can move on to the next step, which is entrepreneurship and side hustles. If you have a passion and you would like to turn that into a business or a side hustle, taking continuously small steps in the right direction to get there is also a form of investing in yourself. Entrepreneurship allows you to leverage your unique skills and interests to create value and potentially generate additional income streams. Following your dream and passion is also an important factor, actually a very important factor for your emotional well-being. I know, Anna, you love to get up early. So what does your day look like? Well, I usually stand up around four o'clock in the morning. I like to start my day with a breakfast. I don't want to rush into things immediately. And then I start usually working on something. It is either a translation or does work for our business. 
but I like to have those quiet morning hours where the world is either dark or just peaceful. You know, it lets me concentrate and really work and excel at targets that I have set for myself. And then once I feel like, okay, now I need a break, then I use my time for a workout or a meditation or a visualization of my goals, only to then restart my second part of the day. So as you can see, it's basically steps that I set myself and that I've tried to reach. So yes, working on our entrepreneurship or on our business that increase our income is a religious part of my day. Same here, actually. I just do it in a different order because I'm the opposite. <laughs> I hate getting up early. So I get up, I wouldn't say whenever I can, but I do get up way later than 4 a.m. And I work late. So once I'm done with my day's work, whether that is tour guiding or doing translations, then I sit down and work on our business, for example. Yeah. Also religiously, sometimes also on the weekend. And sometimes it can be difficult to stop working. I have two jobs to begin with and there's our business. And it always feels like there isn't enough time for myself. So that is another very important part. Yes, money and business and all of that is important. But it can only work if you also look after yourself. And that's why one of the bullet points on my list is look after yourself. One hour a day minimum, do something that's good for me. Yes, now I like that you're actually tying it back to the mental well-being. This aspect of, yes, you can push yourself, but remember that your body is the house that you live in. And if you do not take care of it, you will not be able to actually deal with other things such as, you know, improving personal skill sets. So all of these things kind of interlink into each other and you need to find a balance. An emotional and a good goal can, of course, motivate you to continue working on your skills and improving yourself. But you need to do it in a way that actually is good for you mentally. So let's move on to the next topic, personal finance and investing. Now, of course, we are all about attracting money. So this one is a must for the list. Personal finance and investing are fundamental components of self-investment. So we encourage you to continuously educate yourself about managing money, creating a budget and making informed investment decisions. Building financial literacy is essential for achieving financial independence and long-term security. Investing in yourself is not just about acquiring new skills. It's also about unlearning limiting beliefs and embracing a growth mindset. You might remember that one from our last episode, and if you don't, you can always listen to it again. Essentially, don't be afraid to take risks and step outside your comfort zone. Embrace failure as an opportunity to learn and to grow. Just like Nelson Mandela said, I never lose. I either win or learn. Oh, I love that one. As we encourage you to invest in yourself, we want to emphasize that self-care is essential throughout this journey. I think we express that quite a lot. So be kind to yourself, practice self-compassion and celebrate your progress no matter how small. Now it's time to take this to the real world and talk about an example. Let's share the inspiring real example of Nikki Newton King, a prominent South African businesswoman who embodies all the principles we just mentioned. Now, if you don't know Nikki Newton King, she is a respected figure in the financial world and a trailblazer for a woman in leadership roles. She served as a chief executive officer of the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Nikki's journey to becoming the CEO of the JSE, the Stock Exchange, started with a strong passion for finance and economics. She pursued her studies at the University of Edwardesrand, where she earned a bachelor's degree of commerce, majoring in economics and accounting. Her fascination with the stock market and its potential to drive economic growth ignited her desire to make an impact in the financial sector. Now, after completing her studies, Nikki joined the JSE as an economist in 1990. Over the years, she showcased her expertise and leadership skills, rapidly climbing the corporate ladder. So she held various roles within the JSE, such as a director of operations and director of the equity market. Throughout her career, Nikki always demonstrated a strong dedication to learning and self-improvement. She attended, for example, executive education programs and sought out mentors to enhance her knowledge of the financial markets and gain insights into effective leadership. In 2012, Nikki's hard work and her exceptional performance 
were recognized when she was appointed as the CEO of the JSE, making her the first female CEO in the exchange's history. Her appointment was a milestone for gender representation and diversity in the financial industry. As CEO, Nikki focused on driving innovation, promoting transparency and enhancing the JSE's reputation as a world-class stock exchange. She also championed initiatives to empower women in the financial sector and encourage young people to consider careers in finances and economics. Under Nikki's leadership, the JSE continued to grow and solidify its position as a key player in Africa's financial markets. So her ability to navigate complex challenges with resilience and vision earned her recognition both nationally and internationally. Beyond her corporate accomplishments, Nikki is known for her passion to empower others and giving back to the community. She actively engages in initiatives that support education, women's advancements and sustainable development. Now, Nikki's inspiring journey showcases the power of passion, determination and continuous self-improvement. Her story serves as inspiration for women aspiring to lead in a male-dominated industry and demonstrates that with perseverance and a growth mindset, anyone can achieve remarkable success. You can see why we picked her as an example. Because her story is truly remarkable. It demonstrates the incredible power of investing in yourself and the ripple effect it can have on various other aspects of life. Remember, investing in yourself is not a one-time event. It's a lifelong commitment to continuous growth and improvement. As we wrap up this empowering episode, we want to leave you with a meaningful quote. The best investment you can make is in yourself. The more you learn, the more you earn. This one is by Warren Buffett. Thank you for joining us today on Money Magnet. We hope that this episode has sparked a flame of inspiration within you. Stay tuned for more empowering episodes on personal finance and achieving financial independence. Until next time, invest in yourself, embrace your potential and let your light shine bright. Thanks for being part of the Money Magnet community. And don't forget, you are a... Money Money Magnet. Magnet!